My name is Logan Harmon and I am about to be a senior in college and I've been at Faith Bridge since I was in sixth grade. We specifically came to Faith Bridge because of the student ministry. I got involved in Elevate first until I moved to Point Break and the high school ministry. I remember high school was such a time for me where I mean, everyone's trying to fit in, they're trying to find this group, and the leaders that were here making you feel welcome, feel loved, like you didn't have to be somebody you weren't, um, but you were accepted for who you were, um, showed me what genuine relationships look like. There was a guy named Jason Connor who was my Curious Leader, who eventually discipled me outside of uh, curious from sixth grade all the way until I graduated high school. Logan always stayed in relationship with me throughout high school, but he was very honest with me too about some of the challenges that, that he faced uh, and some of the questions that he that he continued to have. I love that he was always very candid with me about going like, I know this is what God says, but I, I don't really feel it or, or I'm really challenged by that. I'm still thinking on that. Uh, he never he was never one to just kind of tell me what I might want to hear. That discipleship was the first time someone had ever come alongside of me uh, and was teaching me th these things, but also he was doing life with me. It's not just this, this once a week we meet and uh, do a Bible study or once a week we meet and pray together, but the, the vision of, of kind of like really knowing one another and really being a part of each other's lives uh, beyond uh, you know going to church or, or meeting for this or that. He helped me overcome some of the biggest sin struggles uh, that I was dealing with because I didn't know how to uh, and it was the first time someone stepped in and said hey uh, let me let me walk this with you. That was an amazing time for me because it was a place while I was lost I could come in uh, and feel loved and feel accepted. Coming out of high school, going into college, I decided to go to the University of Oklahoma and was super excited about that. But I would, I would say that it was in my first year of college where I really found uh, that I truly uh, wasn't surrendered uh, to Christ. I knew that, that leaving high, you know, high school and, and moving towards university, that, um, that he was still he was still working some things out for himself. I knew that he had a, a great heart, and I knew that from his mom and dad at home, and uh, from me and from others in FSM that had been pouring into him, um, I knew that, that he knew the right things. And I know that, that God never lets those things go to waste. Uh, I, know, I know that they were deeply in his heart, but I knew that there was also um, kind of, you know, that, that battle with, within him of, of who, who he was gonna, ultimately be, what choices he was ultimately going to make. It was at the end of my freshman year. I was just in a really broken place. I mean, I, I, I did the fraternity life. I partied. I did everything that you're supposed to as a freshman in college that the world tells you. And it left me more broken than when I came in. And so I remember like specifically crying out to God and being like, I'm, I'm trying to chase after you. And yet, I, I don't feel you. And I remember him saying, you know, I won't, I won't help you until you, you let me help you. If you, and it was in that moment I realized like he was asking me to surrender and it was something that I had never done before. That brought a whole new meaning on what it means to give your life to Christ because I ran my own life. And it was in that moment I, gave my life to Christ and I think that one of the most amazing things now three years into this looking back is everything that I had done growing up in the church God used to pursue me you know sometimes people will you know it's much later in life you know 5 10 20 50 years later when people are coming to that realization of the truth of the things that they were told as kids it was a seriously a uh, high day you know a, a great day when, uh, when I learned that, that really God had, had begun, you know, continued to water those, those seeds that, that had been planting and, and, and really continuing to transform uh, Logan's heart and mind that first year uh, in university. Uh, so I'm discipling a couple guys now, 
Uh, and a lot of times I find myself when I'm in these one-to-one -one meetings with them or these one-to-two meetings with them, uh, thinking back to uh, what Jason did for me uh, when I was growing up. It's an actual like relationship and I wouldn't have known that unless I had first been taught and two, if I would not have been given that example. I think discipleship is important for students because I mean, middle school and high school are, are just fantastic opportunities for that. They are some of the most challenging seasons in a person's life and they're really formative about who that person's gonna be. If we're training them to be the best baseball players or the best students or the best football players or the best you know, vocalists, like we're doing all, we're, we're training students in all these other ways right now and why not really, you know, challenge them to, to take their, their walk and relationship with God seriously in the same way. All of these things that I experienced and learned, uh, I'm now getting to bring into my personal ministry. And the fact that I have a ministry is only because I was taught the significance of that. Because I had this foundation and someone decided to invest in me, because there was a building for me to go to, there was a worship band on Sunday night, I now have salvation and a, and a relationship with God for all of eternity.